Developing on Windows is kind of a terrible experience. Um, so I finally reached my tipping point and decided to set up a Docker-based Linux developer environment where I can do all my software development in the nice cozy home of a Docker container where I don't have to worry about some crazy errors due to using Windows or something. Um, and I just wanted to make a video to explain why I'm doing that and to show you guys how you can do the same because it's been very convenient for me lately. Uh, I find that I'm spending a lot more time actually solving my problems instead of fumbling around with errors. Um, so first of all, like why am I doing with it, doing this? So the reasons I have are, are posted up here. So first one, like developing on Windows is pretty terrible. And there's there's three different like sub reasons for this. And the first is that like things generally don't work the way that they're supposed to. When you're following a tutorial or you're following a guide, you're running these like NPM commands and you know it's supposed to work like first shot, but you're getting all these bizarre errors and you spend most of your time actually debugging the errors instead of doing what you're trying to do in the first place, which gets really time consuming and really frustrating. And then the second thing is that I've noticed that when you do need like some specific dependencies, like say you need Postgres or whatever, uh, or MySQL, you have to download the MSIs and then they come with all these different bundles of dependencies as well. And then once you're done with that, there's no easy way to get rid of it. So your machine just becomes polluted with all these dependencies and it gets out of control like super, super fast. Um, and the, the third reason is like WSL, which is, um, I think it stands for Windows Subroutine for Linux or Windows Subsystem for Linux. And it's basically like Ubuntu within Windows. It's like an emulator though. So if you, you know, press your Windows button and you type WSL, I think this is enabled by default. This is what it looks like. It looks like a terminal. Let me just make it bigger. So if I put my password in here, it, this looks like a, um, a Ubuntu terminal, right? Like you have access to things, you can do whatever. But I've noticed that like even with this, it doesn't work half the time for similar reasons that I've had with Windows. And I just gave up on it because like I don't have the time to, first of all, deal with Windows, then deal with something that is emulating on Windows. It's just another layer of like silliness that gets out of hand. And the, the final reason is that like, even if you get everything working and generally you're having an all right experience, it's not like production. You're in a completely different environment. And even though something's working on your machine, it may not work for a production machine that usually run, you know, Linux or Debian or, or something like that. Um, so these were big enough reasons for me um, to move to a permanent development environment within Docker. And so uh, I wanted to show you guys how I did that because it's super, super convenient. Um, so I have some steps here that I want to kind of run you guys through, but first I want to just show you the Docker image that we're using here. Um, so I found, I did some, some Googling and I found this great image by this um, guy here, Technic All Dev. And it's, this image is just like a general purpose image that contains like a whole bunch of different languages. It's got a lot of variety. So it contains things like, um, you know, C++, Contains Go, Python, Node.js, Ruby, Postgres, Mongo, MySQL, uh, all these utilities as well. Git, uh, I think it has the AWS CLI too. If it doesn't, I'm going to add it. But um, this has a lot of things. And so if you go to the GitHub and you take a look at it, it it's here. So all dev and then source all dev and then inside the Docker file. You can take a look at like what he's doing in here. So he's just kind of like grabbing some or making some config. Um, and then applying a whole bunch of stuff. Now, if this doesn't suit you, if like all these things are too much or you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, you can use this as a template and make your own and just kind of strip out a lot of this, the junk here and then you have your own image. But uh, I thought this was a good starting point for me and uh, that's what I'm going to be using here. So that's what uh, we are doing. So um, the first thing that you need, like kind of a requirement for this, is that you need to have Docker installed, regardless if you're on Mac or Windows. And by the way, this works for, for both Mac and Windows. Um, so if you have Docker installed, that's great. It usually comes in a, um, you should see like a, a Docker icon in your system tray. And you want to right click that icon and open your dashboard. This is what your, your Docker dashboard looks like, um, at least on Windows. It probably looks something similar on Mac. Um, so once you, you start that up, the first thing that we need to do once we set that up is that we need to enable file sharing so that our um, local Windows environment can access the files that are within our container and vice versa. Oh, by the way, a main pro of this, I don't think I mentioned this, was that you can write your code all locally in your IDE on your Windows machine. And that code is going to be, or those files are going to be existing within the Docker container. That's why this is so convenient because you get like everything native to your environment, but 
your actual execution environment is going to be like a tightly controlled area that you know is going to be reliable for you but anyways we, we want to enable file sharing so uh, the first thing we need to do is just click on this gear icon up here go to resources and then click on file sharing and then from here you're going to see um, depending if you have some directories already configured i already have one here so my machine or my docker is set up to share my c users dan directory um, you may want a different one here, so you're going to click this plus icon and then just set whatever directory you want. You can set more than one here, so if you want to share like a bunch of different locations, that's fine too. Um, but this is a prerequisite. If you don't do this, you're not going to be able to see the files that exist um, on your host machine. So make sure that you do that. Uh, once you do, click on cancel now and you should see this screen again. So that's uh, the expectation. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to get our network IP address. And if you're on Mac, um, you do that by typing, I believe, ifconfig, and then you look for your IP address. Um, this is mine. It's 192.168.0.110. But I'll show you how to find yours because yours may be different. So what you want to do is just open up PowerShell. Um, and so this is, you know, what PowerShell looks like here. And you just run this command that I have, get net IP address. And I'm just going to paste that in. And if we scroll up, we should see right here under IP address. And you can see here my IP address is this, 192.168.0.110. And then um, in this command here, um, this is the next step. You basically want to copy this to clipboard, this IP address, because you're going to need it for later anyways. But basically swap the host IP with your IP address here. Um, so this is the, com like once you do that, this is the command that we're going to be running. So let me just walk you through the things that you need to change and like what this command is even doing. Uh, so we're saying docker run, we're giving our container a name, so it's called Ubuntu development. Um, we're setting some environment variables, specifically we want our host IP to set to whatever our IP address is. And this is something important here, uh, this port mapping thing. So we're exposing port 3000 on our docker container, and we're saying dash p means, well this is port mapping, so this is saying um, port 3000 on our Windows machine should be mapped to port 3000 on our docker container. So what, what the implications of this are is that, like, say you're in your Docker container and you're starting up a Node.js application on port 3000. Um, you want to go to your browser and then, like, test out, like, hey, I go to port 3000 localhost, right? See if it works. Well, if you don't do this, if you don't expose the port that you're running on to your host container, when you go to browser, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to access the port uh, because it's going to be closed because, you know, Docker restricts things unless you tell it to, to, to do otherwise. Uh, so, and then from there, we're saying dash V and we're passing in a directory. This is my directory um, to my desktop and we're mapping it to source within the Docker container. Now, what this say is saying is that when we run our this command, um, when we access the source directory within our Docker container, it's going to be like a sim link or a mapping to this directory on my host machine. And if that didn't make sense, uh, don't worry about it because you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about in a second. And then we're just setting some additional things. We're setting our, um, our tag. So we want to use this image, the technic dev or technic com l dev. And then we want to run bid and bash once we, uh, we get past all that. So what I'm going to do is just uh, copy this command. Make sure you swap this out, by the way, with whatever uh, IP address you have, your directory, and whatever ports that you want to expose. Um, and I'm going to go and run this guy now. So clear, and then let's just, oops. No, I did not copy this. There we go. And so if this was your first time running this, by the way, um, you're going to download the image. Now, because I already had the image uh, downloaded from a previous run, it was instant. But for you, like it's a couple gigabytes. So just keep that in mind. It may take a little bit of time depending on your connection. Uh, so after that, you should see like a bunch of different things happen. So if you notice, I kind of want to bring your attention over here. Now on our Docker um, hub, or not our Docker hub, but our Docker dashboard, we can see that now we have our container here and it's running on port 3000. Now, if you want, you can click on CLI here to get into the machine and do whatever you want. But we can see, like after we ran this command, now we are, we are in the machine as well, right? Like we are accessing its um, file system here. So notice here that we have source. And remember in our command, I was mapping source to C users Dan desktop. So if I go into source directory now and I do ls, 
Well, these are my files and my directories on my desktop now and see that that's accessible within my Docker container. So right now we're in the Docker container. Like you can run, you know, Python, um, how do I exit Python? Control D. Uh, you can run, you know, Node.js or, you know, Node or th there's Ruby here. There's Golang. There's, or Go rather, there's Curl. There's VI. There's everything that we specified in that Docker file. All those dependencies, they're all going to exist here. Does it have AWS? No, it doesn't. That sucks. But anyways, um, that's how you can kind of get this started. So now keep in mind that this is like a one-time thing um, when you get this set up. You don't have to run that command every time. What you can do next time is you just come to, um, basically when you're in an off state, it'll look like this. So I just press stop to tear down the container. Now, the next time, if you want to do this, you just go here and, and you type, or not type, but you click on start. That's going to start up your container, and then that's where it comes down to the steps for every time after. You just start your container, and then on your PowerShell, you do Docker PS. That's going to give you all the processes. Uh, and then for the container ID, if I expand this, actually, I don't know if you can see. Well, the, the furthest to the left here, this 47FD, this thing is basically what you want to attach to. That's the command that I have here. Uh, so if you run Docker attach, and paste that in, now you're back on the image. So, you know, we're still in source. We're still, um, you know, we, we can navigate, we can do whatever we want, right? So, um, and now I, I just wanna show you really quick the fact that I can still access port 3000 um, on my host Windows machine, even though I'm running a Node.js like GraphQL application in my Docker container. So um, here I, I just had a very basic um, if, if you take a look at this real quick, it's just a very basic uh, server uh, that's listening on port 3000. It's just a GraphQL server. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just node index.js and hopefully this will work. So we're, we're listening on port 3000. So if you go to your browser now and you just type in localhost local host 3000, then you can access you know, what's going on in your Docker container. Now keep in mind, this browser is from my Windows machine. And that's what the, the port mapping magic did here. If you're facing some debugging problem here, try to take the IP address and um, put that instead of localhost. This should work as well. So you see that that works as well. Um, and you should be able to access your application within the Docker container. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using from now on when I'm developing. I'm always going to be developing my Docker container. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you had any trouble setting this up. And as always, if you liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.